Hey guys, welcome to Jeep Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Ball Blair 12. Stick around. Okay, so we're doing the Ball Blair 12 today. I think this is only the second time I've done a Ball Blair on the channel. The first time was when I reviewed the 15 a while back, and I really liked the 15. I thought it was good. I think I scored it 87, if I remember correctly. Uh, with my new, like, adjusted scoring, I'd probably bring that down to, like, 86, but still a really solid whiskey. Recommend it. Anyway, we're here to talk about our 12-year-old today. This one came out back in 2019. That's when Ball Blair rebranded. And when they rebranded, they did away with their vintages. Their core range used to be entirely made of vintage whiskeys and their entry level stuff were usually around like, like 10 or 11 years old. They did away with that. Now we have a consistent 12 year old age statement. We've got a redesigned bottle. And of course we have the inevitable higher price tag. Now, I don't have a problem with Ball Blair. I think they're a solid brand, and I don't really have a problem with uh, their owner, Inverhouse. Like, when it comes to corporate overlords in the whiskey industry, they're definitely not the worst offender. But that said, uh, this 12-year-old is a good chunk more expensive than what I used to pay for those vintage releases. So I'm thinking maybe we can throw in like a sound effect, like a disappointed horn sound, maybe. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Still feel like something's missing though. Like maybe we can throw in an emoji. The one where his face is like... Like he's... You can tell this dude's not having it. Anyway, this stuff was matured in a combination of ex-bourbon and double-fired American oak casks. And double-fired doesn't really make much sense to me. I mean, you get fired once, you've already lost the job. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. Um, there's no excuses. You know, here at G Whiskey, I really strive to be. Now, there doesn't appear to be any sherry in this one. It seems like it was entirely bourbon matured, although I can't be sure of that. So it is quite a contrast to the 15 year old, which was quite sherried. And reviews for this stuff are kind of all over the map. Some people have given it glowing reviews, they absolutely love it. Other people are a little bit more neutral towards it so let's see where this reviewer lands on it in the meantime if you'll kindly leave a like down below that'd be greatly appreciated so the nice thing about ball blair is that we can count on them for good specs this one comes in at 46 percent it's non-chill filtered and our colors natural so when they redesigned ball blair i don't think they changed the bottle itself i think it was just the label that got a redesign i like the pudgy round uh, bottle shape. The label, uh, I think it's got a very clean, simple, stylish look to it. It's got a bit of a an art deco vibe. I like it. I'm gonna give this four out of five for presentation. It does say non-chill filtered. It says natural color. It does talk a little bit about the casks. So our transparency is good. It doesn't give us much more than the essentials, but all the essentials are there, which is enough. So I did add a splash of water to this. This is a bright and sharp nose. I'm getting some zesty lemon notes here, like lemon rind. There's some florals underneath that. We get some wood varnish. There's sponge cake in here. There's hay, there's oak, there's some white pepper, and maybe a little bit of a faint fennel note. Um, yeah, it's a nice nose. The palette and finish give us a nice spicy arrival with zesty lemon, white pepper, honey, and vanilla. And that moves on to white chocolate, hay, pears, and barley. And there's even kind of like a, a bitter charcoal note towards the finish. Kind of like a burnt cry, cry pust. Burnt cry pust. Burnt pie crust. Um, short to medium finish. Okay, so I think this is good, but I don't think it's going to be for everyone. I do think it's one of those love it or hate it type situations. Uh, there will be a lot of you out there that don't get on with this one, and I understand why. And I should clarify, this is a quality whiskey, but it's going to be less accessible than a lot of other whiskeys that are done in this style. And by this style, I mean like that bright, clean Highland style. Uh, so stuff like your Glen Caddam, stuff like your Deanstons, uh, even Dal Winnie. I mean, Dal Winnie is not as good as this, but even Dal Winnie, those are going to be easier whiskeys than this. This one will challenge you. 
And that's because there's a couple elements to this that I think make it kind of hard to love. Uh, one of them is that it's a sharp whiskey and the other it's a bitter whiskey, particularly towards the finish. Uh, when I say sharp, I mean stuff like we have zesty lemon in here, we have wood varnish, we have white pepper, we have straight up alcohol. It's a sharp whiskey and that's not going to work for a lot of you. And listen, I have been known to enjoy sharp whiskeys. I don't think sharpness is inherently bad. It depends on the execution. Uh, you guys know I love Classic Laddie. That's a great sharp whiskey. Uh, King's Barnes, Dream to Dram, another great example. So sharpness can be good. Uh, this one is sharper still than those other two. Um, is it too sharp? Almost. Beyond that, we've got that bitterness I mentioned. It's kind of like this earthy charcoal bitterness, maybe a little bit of herbal elements in there too. We have a very drying hay note in here. So yeah, it's a, it's a challenging whiskey. It's not one that I would offer up to a beginner, for example. And I don't mean that in like a pretentious way where only enthusiasts are gonna get it. Uh, listen, I'm a bit of an enthusiast myself. I've had a few whiskeys in my time and I like a challenging whiskey as much as the next guy. I don't love this. I like it. It's fine. I think the problem for me here is that those sharp, drying, bitter elements in here aren't giving me a strong enough sense of balance from the whiskey. Uh, on paper, we're getting everything right. We've got the specs. This is a full, unique, flavorful whiskey. Uh, but yeah, I don't feel like it comes together as a whole. I don't love the balance in this. And fundamentally, I just don't enjoy it as much as a lot of other whiskeys of this style or in this price range because we got to remember whiskey is competitive and like I've already named off quite a few whiskeys in this video that I consider to be better than this. Uh, what did I name off? We have uh, Deanston 12, we have the Classic Laddie, we have Glen Caddam 10, we have Kings Barnes Dream to Dram, all of which I think are better whiskeys and they offer up more balance. So I'm gonna land on 83 for this one, which I know I've sounded like really harsh. 83 is a good score and it's actually a pretty good whiskey, but there's just, I guess, too many things working against it. Like I said, I think there are better whiskeys out there in the same price range, in the same style. And beyond that, like I said, the balance thing, it doesn't really come together on the whole for me. So it is a good whiskey, but it's not a great whiskey. So for value, I don't love this. I think it's just okay. Um, this sells for about 50 US, roughly 40 pounds in my market, which I'm sure sounds great to a lot of you, but let's keep in mind Taiwan is a particularly cheap market and 50 US is at the very high end of entry level pricing. For reference, I used to pay roughly 35 US or about 27 pounds for those vintage releases. And if we want to look at a more contemporary example, all those whiskeys that I just listed off, the King's Barnes, the Classic Laddie, the Glen Caddam 10, those are all currently cheaper than this whiskey and I consider them to be better. So again, for value, yeah. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Always appreciate it. And of course, I do want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Ball Blair 12? Have you tried it? Was I too harsh? Are you a fan? Let me know down below. Finally, down below in the comments, you can also let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.